Hi and welcome back to Design TV in proud collaboration with Stockholm Design Week. In today's episode we are talking to internationally renowned designer Patricia Ukiola, Swedish star designers Åke Axelsson and Emma Alberts. We visit Swedish carpet brand Ogeborg and we will get to know more about a true design icon, the Fiskas Scissors. In the end of this episode, I will have a chat with Hanna Nova and summarize the highlights of Stockholm Design Week 2022. First off, Hanna Nova is meeting up with Patricia Ukiola to talk about her new textiles for Quadrat. Welcome to the Quadrat showroom in Stockholm and the launch of the curtain textile Punto by Patricia Urquiola. Uh, Patricia is with me here uh, digitally. We're here for, uh, for the launch of your new curtain textile uh, Punto. Uh, it was really born from the research you did uh, for a previous Quadrat project and it's got quite a three-dimensional feel. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you want to talk us through the collection a bit? Working, in fact, with with Quadrat with you, no, it's been always uh, always about challenges, and even in in a, in a very delicate way, many times. Uh, even in a in a, they always they always conversation um, very deep about just a little piece of of, of materia, no, and or just a, a combination of very simple uh, colors. Then I I like a lot the, the way that Quadrat approached the, and interrelate. I think our work as designer and uh, the work of so on the, on the world of 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 the market, no. And uh, I think in this case, uh, with uh, with this project, we had the need to work on a contract curtain. Uh, that would give a sense of domesticity. What? How to do it? Then uh, the idea was um, obviously we know that hospitality industry has uh, a strict security regulations, and uh, Trevira is still being the fireproof material officially certified for contract. Then um, uh, approaching Trevira um, is, is a point of can. I think um, the way to approach Trevira was doing a 100% Trevira material that in, in some way could be always a recyclable fabric. And, uh, but at the same time, the ambition for, for Quadrat with, uh, with this kind of synthetic fibers is, is always to loop them easily in a circular, circular production, which is an argument that I think is ongoing in, in many ways. Uh, so we gave a... Uh, uh, to the fabric, a kind of uh, real, I hope, soft uh, and um, almost like cotton hand. I that was to uh, to get a touch with um, uh, from a certain way and uh, to give to this uh, material um, a vibrant uh, twill look. I thought that for us, um, I think, was the one of the most important things. There were more or less twelve colors. And I wanted to follow the path of uh, relate and reflect the two fabrics we did uh, before, exploring um, further, how could they say, further possibilities of the diagonal uh, twill wave. Then that for me, the, the, the diagonal is an argument I like a lot in the, in the way we weave. And then we explore it in an enlarged uh, dimension. And uh, what can be interesting is too that we played with uh, three solid uh, colored yarns, um, one within the warp and, and two in the whiff. And I think they were weaved together, creating a kind of chameleon effect, but always in a very gentle and, and very, very light way. That was the idea, just to know to, uh, uh, the material is very simple, but at the same time has all this uh, research. And um, from, from from close up, I think we you can perceive that the, 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 you have this kind of uh, uh, little colorful dots uh, and a kind of little playful energy. But from afar, the dots create a gentle speedy effect, uh, uh, which is uh, just a, um, an, an, an aware of of thinking always that color can change away depending in the movement and in the light but at the same time in the way you, you weave it. Mm. But you worked with the Quadrat for quite some time now. How has the relationship developed? Uh, what, what do you think characterizes Quadrat? 
with Quadrat, one of the important things too that I like to, to explain is not only explaining the, the way we weave or the way we approach the fabrics or the way we combine the yarns, which is obviously the, the, the focal, the, the most important argument. But the, the other thing which is important is I feel very comfortable in a company that is doing a path really attentive on how to, to put my research or an our research as designer in different ways, but related to what is the, the, the path of the market, the way to, to, to give a new approach to certain materials. And I like a lot this to be um, protected or to be in the path you know, together with a company with this um, strong sensibility that is um, and we know and I can say after so many years I don't know I got a lot of fantastic friends from not only my my um, my professional from my land I go through Quadrat. Mm, that's super nice thank you so much Patricia it's been uh, lovely to uh, to uh, have you here in Stockholm Design Week for a little short uh, time digitally we hope to see you live very very soon thank mm -hmm. you so much We are now standing in Ogeboy showroom in Stockholm together with Helene Ogeboy. The company was founded in the 60s by your parents. Tell me, what happened since then? My parents started the company in 1963 and since then a lot has changed. By then it was just a few colors, just a few designs, uh, not so much demand. Today everybody wants their own color, a unique kind of interior and they want different qualities, combined, so everything is more a la carte today. And also environmentally, everybody wants to have better carpets uh, due to the environment. They want to see where it's manufactured, uh, by whom it's manufactured, that no, everybody is working that is in the right age and so on. But also they want to have carpets more and more in homes today, wall-to-wall -wall carpets in bedrooms and in walk-in closets and also big carpets in living rooms, for example. And it's a very good base and very cozy in the homes. And in the offices, they want to have carpets due to sound absorption, but also uh, it's good for your body not to walk too much on hard floors. It's better for your back, for instance. You've been working for quite some time with Note Design Studio. Tell me about the collaboration. Yes, that's correct. We started to work with them at Stockholm Furniture Fair. They made our stands and they have made it for several years now. And we wanted to work with them because they have so, so good uh, thoughts about colors and also form, I would say, and design. And it's very nice because we also like the colors. And uh, so they open up different kind of moods for us and design moods. And they also have developed some hand tufts during this time to each and every exhibition. And now they have made our showroom too, and it's very, it's very harmonic, I think. It's uh, like a cupboard box, and it's, everything is in this color with a beige uh, yellow tone, very soft, the same color in the walls, the ceiling, the furniture, everything goes in the same. And that's because you should splash different colors. You can show a green, for example, very easily. Uh, in this kind of environment. And now they have also made this carpets dot and line who is there on the floor. And uh, they are in yellow and they are in orange and they are in squares and they are in dots like this. And it's very nice to have these colors in here. Finally, tell us about the new collection. Yeah, uh, this is Stella. It's a nice mixture of eucalyptus and elegant thin wool. And it's 45 millimeter high. And that makes it very elegant and vivid uh, to look at. And it's in 11 colors, so it's both like a bit darker colors and a bit softer colors. Uh, and you can combine them too and make different mixes and patterns with them. And uh, it, it, it's a very elegant carpet, I would say, luxurious. And this is Stella Shade. Uh, it's the same quality. But we, here we work with different colors, from dark to bright yellow, for example. We have two now, we have one green also. And you, depending on how you put it, it, it looks different. So 
I think it's really bright and nice. Thank you. This was really interesting. Jag sitter nu i utställningen Talking to Åke som precis har öppnat på Sven Harris konstmuseum. Och det är ett samarbete mellan Stockholm Design Week och Sven Harris konstmuseum. Och I centrum så står Åke Axelsson som är en inredningsarkitekt som har varit verksam i över sex decennier. Och sen är det fem inbjudna studios som har samarbetat med honom på olika sätt och fått fria händer och infallsvinklar. Och där ibland så finns Emma Olbers. Hej Emma och Åke. Hej. Hej. Ni har samarbetat för den här utställningen Talking to Åke och gjort en fåtölj tillsammans som heter Tillsammans. Stämmer. Ja. Och målet med den är att göra en så klimatsmart fåtölj som möjligt. Vad är det man ska tänka på då, Åke? Man måste tala på, tänka på materialet, vad man använder för material och, och teknik och produktionen, tillverkningen av produkten. Lång hållbarhet på, på, på produkten är ju kanske det allra viktigaste. Då blir produkten klimatanpassad. Men det här är ju saker som du har tänkt på otroligt länge men som är högaktuella idag. Men du, gjorde ju, du var ju medverkad ju i den pionjärutställningen på Moderna museet som hette Ararat. Där, och det var ju 1976. Ja. Och vi står på precis samma plats idag. Ja och nej. På ett vis gör vi det men, men då det finns en större... Um, förståelse för och större acceptans för, för, för de här tankarna idag än vad det gjorde då. Då, då sågs de här idéerna som ja, någonting som ja, det togs inte på allvar. Mm -hmm. Det gör det idag inom, inom alla kretsar tror jag. Mm. Så idag är vi mer redo? Mycket. Mm -hmm. Och vi vet mer om det. det finns så mycket fakta mm. så att man kan inte bortse ifrån från detta. Och Emma, du och Åke, ni kände inte varandra tidigare och nu har ni samarbetat på den här möbeln. Vill mm. du berätta lite om ert samarbete? Det började ju kanske just med att jag intresserade mig för Ararat. Eh, hela den utställningen eh, och sen då hittade jag just och jag är med mig det här eh, att du åker 1976 och det var ju alltså 46 år sedan jag var fyra år gammal eh, då har du skrivit här står det ett alternativ till dagens möbelproduktion och så eh, hade du skrivit en målsättning då eh, och det, jag behöver inte läsa hela den här men jag kan läsa eh, eh, de två första här det är att så långt som möjligt använda det råmaterial som finns i området där möblerna tillverkas. Att konstruera möbler så att minsta möjliga material åtgår, men ändå ger en stark produkt med lång livslängd. Jag måste läsa trean också. Att möblerna ska vara lätta att reparera och byta ut delar på. Mm. Och alla de där tre punkterna är sådana där punkter som jag ofta säger till journalister. De är väldigt lika med mitt förhållningssätt så det som jag har fascinerats väldigt mycket av är, är ditt förhållningssätt men sen att du också hållit i det så länge ända sedan 1976 så att det var en stor sak med Ararat utställningen ja. och att den förändrade samhället till viss del även om vi hade önskat mer men att du har kämpat på med det så där länge och, och, och fortfarande gör det. det. Det är ju väldigt roligt. Och sen så för mig var det väldigt intressant att, att se att, och det kan man se i utställningen då vi bland annat tagit ut en text från den här katalogen. Att det är ju precis som att den skulle kunna vara skriven av Johan Rockström och Greta Thunberg tillsammans. Mm. Eh, alltså du behöver inte ändra ett ord. Och det är ju nästan lite kusligt. Mm. 
Och den här utställningen står ju inte bara under designveckan utan den står ju i nästan två månader till 27 mars. Och innehåller många olika infallsvinklar på ditt arbete Åke. Så det finns mycket tankar om man tar sig tid att läsa alla texter som man kan ta med sig härifrån. Vi kommer också ha lite samtal här nu när det öppnar upp. Och, och hoppas att det kan leda till vidare diskussioner. Mm. Mm. Stort tack för att ni ville vara med och berätta lite om samarbetet och stolen. This year, the classic Fiskar Scissors is celebrating 55 years. Hi Tau, can you tell us the story behind the scissors? And the Fiskars 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 his first scissors as early as in the, in the 80s, 30s. But in the 1967, Fiskars was revolutionized the everyday cutting experience by developing the world's first plastic handle scissors, a true innovation that's made top quality scissors affordable and accessible to everyone and uh, and whose orange color has become a classic and to this day every single pair of classic scissors are manufactured are hand tested in Fiskars own factory in Bernes, Finland. Wow and what about the orange color? Oh yes Great questions, and the, the, the story of the uh, characteristic of orange color dates back uh, to the happy coincidence in uh, October 1967, and uh, we had the first uh, prototype were being produced, and there were supposed to be uh, three options: uh, black, green, and dark red. But the operator who mixed the plastic had just made viscous orange colored juicers and there are had some left over in the machine and he wanted to use orange first so they didn't waste any plastic and uh, as the decision was needed on the color of the handle and the orange was a bit black by nine one to seven and the and becoming the distinctive feature and defining future generation of the iconic classic scissors. And then in 2003, and the Fiskars Orange become a richest trademark in Finland. So many things are happening in Finnish design at the moment. How do you keep the scissors relevant and desirable? Yes, another good question. And uh, the Fiskars play an impressive role in the creative process of many artists, artisans, and even the Museum of Modern Art in New York has a pair of in their permanent collection. And today, the design of the classic scissors has received worldwide recognition. And since 60, uh, 1967, more than one billion pair of scissors has been sold. Wow, that's an amazing story. Thank you so much, Tao. It was really nice talking to you. It's been a great week and it's now time to summarize. Hanna, how was it? What, what are the highlights of Stockholm Design Week according to you? Well, first and foremost, I want to say it was super small. So uh, while so many brands and, uh, and designers has postponed until the Stockholm Furniture and Light Fair is due in September, 
there were still some really passionate companies and designers doing things this week, which was great to see. And it was like this local nerve um, that, you know, you could feel it and people were out and about. There were three uh, exhibitions that I enjoyed particularly. It was uh, mass production works, it had a beautiful space and a beautiful idea where you could actually book your time slot to build your own chess lounge in a, in a very Enzomari way. Uh, but obviously they done. They were also launching uh, their, their own chess launch ready-made. Uh, and uh, I enjoyed the two auction houses doing exhibitions. One was Bukowski uh, doing an exhibition called Factory Works with the, with the Folk Forum, also emphasizing, you know, the need for local production. And Stockholm Saxons Werk, uh, it was a jointly curated exhibition with the Werk and the New Sweden, two companies, fashion and design, producing with Swedish raw materials in Sweden. And they were really showing the processes and the work behind doing, uh, behind doing that, which is a really passionate work as well. So super local, but very nice. The fair is postponed until September, but you've been active this week with design and architecture talks. Can you tell me about it? Stockholm Design and Architecture Talks uh, are these days, we actually do them both digitally and physical at the fair. So the three day digital program, you can buy your ticket, you can enjoy it for a month, but we start sending it at, at the design week. Uh, this theme, uh, this year, the theme is being a game changer. So we address the most important topics uh, facing the industry right now, sustainability, waste, uh, you know, all these discussions we need to, to address. And it's great to actually see each other and talk. So you can sign up for that and listen. Let's see a teaser from the talks. Hi, I'm Marcus Fares, founder and editor-in-chief of Design. We're here with Stockholm Design and Architecture Talks 2022. I'm Katie Tregidden, author of Waste It, When Trash Becomes Treasure, and I'm dialing in from Cornwall in the UK. When you start to take these things into consideration, then suddenly it becomes economically viable to design in a completely different way. Can you have a sip of water? Oh, thanks so much, Marcus. <laughs> You find all the talks at the Stockholm Furniture and Light Fair website. Thank you, Hanna, for a really fun design week. Well, thank you for having us, Karin. And thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs>